Thank you so much, Graves. We're back here on the desk, and wow, what a game that was. Jake's Kittens coming out the gate swinging, and uh, Avril, I think you've got some thoughts about how they did it on that bot side of the map. Uh, you know, my dream was shattered really fast. <laughs> not a 2 0 3 peak, but, you know, it happens. Yeah, it happens. It's tough, you know, you, you can't... It can't always work out that way, but hey, it could be the 2-1. None of us predicted a three-game series. We all thought it'd be a 2-0 either way, so our predictions are still alive, but, you know, we could. Quakes in the bingo card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> that, they got to do it for the bingo card. Very, very important, but either way, um, yeah, I mean, what, what an incredible game. Jake's Kittens, they really just play, I feel like, an immaculate game, especially around the priority that they had on the bottom side and in the mid side, I think. We are all in agreement we were talking about during the game yeah. that their draft was just so incredibly clean. They got very advantageous lane matchups, and they leveraged that really well, as we can see from the way that they sort of attacked the bottom lane early on. Yeah, I, I mean, we can, you know, these are the 5v5 comps uh, as, as a whole, right? There, we, the, the 3P team got counterpick mid, counterpick top, and they had a winning bot lane matchup. They had this Talia flex as well. Well, it seemed to pretty much stymie everything that 3P went for. Uh, excuse me, Jake Kittens that have got the uh, you know the complete uh, comp uh, the complete draft gap on this one. Like I say, with the counter pick mid, the counter pick top lane, and then a really strong heavy bot lane duo. And like I say, that Talia that was maybe eluded to go mid lane got flexed into the jungle. It felt like everything that that uh, JK had set up for, they were able to execute on through the draft. For sure. I mean, and, and the execution, I think, is what really kind of should stick out. Because like, like we said, they had a great draft. Like, they had those winning lanes. They had the Tatalia Flex, which I, I mean, we all thought was a very, very smart play, as you highlighted. And so to see the execution come through in the game, I think, is what really sticks out, uh, of course. And um, so looking at the matchups, though, in particular, it was... Jake's Kittens, they had the Lucian and the Nami in the bottom lane. That bottom lane is so insanely oppressive. And on the other side, it was Lunar and Just on the Ezreal Nautilus. Now, Avril, of course, you are an ADC. You've probably played this matchup a few times at least. And yeah. uh, let, maybe what sort of went so right for Jake's Kittens in that game? On, on the first three waves, um, when they got the three wave crashing, uh, Ezreal was already half HP by the time that he was crashing into the tower. So, and Ryoma got Pryo too in her mid lane matchup. Uh, so, like, Ryoma didn't even have to show bot. Uh, he could literally just hover and fade into, into, like, the bot river. And Ezreal was already low enough that, like, he, there was easily a dive angle and he had to just recall and miss those two waves. Like, he played it fine after, like, having to recall that was the correct play but him being two waves behind and then on the next cannon it was the same story where ryoma got prior and they also got the, the 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 scare of the dive it was just really hard after the first three waves for ezreal not to play if they played the first three waves better then this wouldn't have been such a stomp but i think that's just what happened it was all about the execution for sure for sure, and and it sort of culminated in that first blood, and they they never looked back. They got that first blood on the bottom side, and then they dove them again, and then they swept top, and they started making things happen, and and it became so impressive. And from that point, I think it's fair to say that the Jake's kittens they got control of the game, and it comes down to those micro plays. But we can see here it starts off with the attempted to gank top from Munchie, and where does that leave open? The bottom side, and Avril, you can talk a little bit more about sort of what this sort of means for. Uh, the the game as a whole yeah uh munchie had to go for this like hail mary play i mean it wasn't the best but it was like kind of his only luck because they they he couldn't move bot he would have just got they would have just got three men dove or just literally like like uh he he needs to go for a cross map play there's no way he wants, wants to play bot here and as well not i mean if it was perfectly played, they could have recalled more, but like, I mean, even then it would just would have been horrible game save either way. So it was just yeah, game right. from here. You talked about the fact that they played it perfectly the first two times. This is the one time that, you know, the two times before they backed off, they didn't get dove. There was like no quote threat of the dive. And this one time that Luna stays under the turret, he's like, okay, 
surely the third time they're still not going to come. They, they fake this out twice, and then it happens to be the third time Ryoma shows his face. He's just hit level 6, no cleanse on the Ezreal. The dive really does play out itself. You have the Glacial Path to tank and take aggro, and you pretty much drop everything itself immediately. Yeah, and, you know, you see that if they're either dropping waves or they're dropping kills. And they both are, are unfortunate. And as we saw, you know, 3P, they weren't able to get anything on the top side. But now it's the swap up the top. Scooped and Prismal, they have come up. I'm not sure if this really counts as a Prismal roam, but we've got a crazy play. No, and, and the bubble here may just seem like he oh wanted to God. shoot it at messages. But that was crazy. He fired that preliminarily, expecting the dash over the wall. That was crazy. Oh my god. That was, you know, Prismal is already showing off just mechanics on Nami of all champions. Ryoma right? going back in here as well, recognizing the damage capability and that likelihood was that he was going to go down there regardless. So takes another one with him to the grave is getting that maximum output for what you're going to get. Yeah, the amount of uh, skill ceiling that these Enchanter champions have is really going to show who really is the best support in the OQ and then these couple of games, because it's mostly going to be Enchanters. The the tank engage supports are kind of like dying out on this new patch. Yeah, it, it, the new patch has been, I think, takes a lot of adjusting. I, I think we can all agree that third parties draft sort of looked a little bit more like something that we could have expected out of... Uh, the previous patch, you know, there, there was a lot of familiar picks that we have seen. And while those picks are still good in their own right, it's not quite uh, maybe what we were expecting in, in terms of the 12.10 meta, just because, you know, enchanters and uh, the, the you know, we we're talking about Kogma and stuff for maybe Scooped. And while the Lushinami obviously looked amazing, uh, and that's not to take away from their draft. It's just we wonder sort of when some of those newer champions will come out. Of course, the players, they've only had about a week and a half on this current patch so it has not been uh, the longest time to get acquainted but Arvel, you have to follow up on that yeah i think uh it, it, especially with this patch it goes to show the best league players are the ones that can adapt the fastest mm -hmm. and like get on top of every patch and know the meta and be the, the best at the meta champions as soon as possible that's when it really shows who the best players are because you can be a god at one patch but if you if you if you're like talent and like your your prospect prospects look horrible after another patch like, like you're you just can't adapt and like you just need to get better at that yeah fair enough i mean hey the best league players are flexible and that is so incredibly true because you know you can be good uh, for a temporary period of time but especially when you look at the competitive sphere some of these players have been great for multiple years now we were talking about how much experience is on golden guardians uh and, and excuse me the ex golden guardians players the you know ryoma of course played on golden guardians academy so did prismal and so the jake's kittens um they they just they have that experience from that academy and now bring it down they've been good for that long and they could play so well but rudy you have a thought and that's what I wanted to touch on, right? This ex-Golden Guardians Academy mid laner Ryoma stepping into uh, this new team on Jake's Kittens. We got to see that versatility, that ad adaptation already. We see the sort of, I I'm going to call it the RNG counterpick of Lissandra into Ari that we've seen just really try to take over and his ability to go from one patch to another, one lane matchup to another. And, you know, there's all of that past experience that you're coming coming down into the amateur scene with the ability to use that up against these up and coming mid laners has certainly shown itself off and in this game particularly getting priority time and time again to go for the dive spot lane to shadow your jungle wherever they want to go really did showcase in this first game yeah absolutely we'll see if jake's kittens if they're able to do it in the next game if they're able to leverage all that experience that they're playing have or if third party they're going to strike back they will be on the red side so we'll th see if there's adjustments in draft but we're going to toss it over to i believe uh, our casters thank you very much production we're tossing it over for game number two getting underway in the draft pretty soon take it away grapes thank you very much hawk max this is really exciting here getting into game number two we talked about you know the the versatility here and, and kind of the experience levels that jake's kittens has as the desk kind of mentioned earlier as well i want to bring up third party's versatility as well in the five games that they played in the open qualifiers they played 24 unique champions only one of them, I believe, was different. Oh, sorry. No, that is from Jake's Kitten. Um, <laughs> I had the whole stat set up, and I messed it up. Either way, they do have the versatility. Third party are going to have to adjust. Probably focus towards that bot lane. I would expect a Lucian ban. What do you think?
Oh, uh, Zach, hello. I believe is muted. Oh, I don't know okay. why I was muted. Uh, I don't think. I... Can oh, we hear whatever. You, Hi. <laughs> hello. I should be audible now. Um, I, I we're talking about stats from the open qualifier here. I do want to throw in scooped in those five games had an average of nine point two kills. That is so many kills on average. <laughs> he was at like 46, I think. That's how the numbers yeah. add up. That is so, so in him. We're seeing that continue forward. I think the I think the average just went up, right? Because he had like yeah, I think it 11 just or 12. That's it, it was something, yeah, something pretty ridiculous. I believe him and City Woody on Taco Gaming were tied for the most kills throughout the open qualifier. Um, and we'll try to see more of it here. Jace Kitten certainly would love that if they could get this easy 2-0 over third party. But... For our underdogs, a lot of adjustments potentially have to be made for them. Now on the red side, they will have the opportunity to get a couple of more counter picks, maybe opening up the map a little bit more for Dinka, which was that win yes. condition we were talking about earlier. Yeah, we saw Porsche go for the counter pick against Dinka specifically because he does have some really brutal stuff he can bring to the table. I'm imagining that that's where Dinka looking at in this game. I'm also imagining that Jake's Kittens are going to spend a lot of top lane bans in this first draft and more importantly, the second one, is we're already seeing the Gwen hit the ban list, just taking away some of the blind opportunities for Dinka. I'm expecting things like the Olaf to also be considered as he did play that one very well in top lane. Yeah, um, Olaf now a top laner, if you guys haven't uh, <laughs> yeah. updated with the patches and everything like that. I believe that was even 12-9, so a lot of, you know, interesting uh, things to look at here for third party. A Rengar ban as Jake's Kittens finally are able to take away some picks here in this first phase. It's been interesting unless you consider that Munchie um, has had that basically banned against him in every single game that he's played so far. Didn't have a ban in the last game, yep. but uh, they did have a very clear strategy of what they wanted to do in the jungle, and that was pick Wukong. The that we saw from Munchie as he has had Rengar banned in all of the games apart from the last one was the Viego which it did look like they banned away themselves. So we're getting a bit of a draft issue. Maybe they realized they didn't actually want to ban the Viego uh, because Munchie really likes playing that one. Yeah, it was, I think in the OQs, it was Viego, 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 and Nocturne. Guess mm -hmm. which game they lost, the Nocturne game. Oh. Um, so Munchie on the Viego, <laughs> definitely very, very strong. And again, we have a slight issue with the draft. I don't know if it's necessarily related to the missed ban or the potential takeaway, but, but either way, I believe Munchie really thrives on some of these proactive like assassin um also known for playing things like the master yi and the zed um <laughs> yeah. solo queue and also in competitive last split so there's always the possibility for some weird things to come out from this young player he's master yi player notes here let me i, I put this directly in our notes yeah. for today we, it this was is, beautifully worded this is bullet points munchy is this anchor yi and uh, that's the end of the sentence that is a complete yeah. sentence in my Weird. notes <laughs> and yeah i mean Nothing else needed for that one as we're getting right back into the draft. It uh, it is not Viego banned away, so maybe uh, maybe we're a little bit right about that. Some of his lore rivals instead with Lucian and Senna. Yeah, so we see the Lucian Senna take away. Definitely makes a lot of sense to Senna uh, a, a remainder from that last game, and of course Scoop just had one of the craziest Lucian games I've ever seen um, in my history commentating League of Legends. So definitely taking that off the board is a good sign for the side of third party. Final ban will be that Kogma Lunar. Let's have a couple of the games on some of these hyper carries. Maybe not the play style we were expecting, but definitely champions that this player can operate on. Good time to give everybody an update on the other stream as well. Kogma is a champion that was prevalent in the last game for 100 Thieves and uh, DK Crew as Lens played that well, and they did end up winning on the side of 100 Thieves as that game is still going on. If you want on Path to LCS, that is the channel, a news channel. Uh, a new, new channel for for the split very cool yeah new twitch channel go check that out echo and rebel definitely killing on the cast there as well but the wukong b1 is going to remain as we go into the first pick phase porsche will lock that in most likely going to be going into the jungle for Aeron. Ooh, and no gangplank ban means that dinka might be considering okay. locking that one in no instead gonna be munchy playing the viego all right they're just picking their champions I don't, out of order just i don't understand why it. you do this yeah like you have the order <laughs> Like, you can't pick them in order. Now you just have to, like, require more time swap. to, like, switch them around or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's an extra step. Come on, guys. <laughs> but, uh, Maybe yeah. Maybe they like it's extra practice with their fingers or something. <laughs> getting, getting warmed up. Yeah, getting, up. getting the draft <laughs> reps in, of course. Yes, that, 
that is planned. Uh, speaking of the plan, they are going against that a bit by considering um, getting Dinka just a blind pick gangplank. We were expecting him to go for a lot of these counter picks, but that is not going to be the case. And this does leave third party on red side with a bit of a question mark. What are they actually going to use these counter picks for? Maybe messages goes for one of his signature assassins or bruisers, things like the Silas that he played very well yeah. in the last split party could certainly come through. But now that the Ari is picked, I'm I'm figuring oh. that like this is going to be something like a vex for him. Can you go Lissandra? I mean it worked <laughs> it worked against them. Maybe That'd be so fun. Okay, so they're on medicine for messages question mark we'll, we'll see vex is definitely a, a good option as well as max because message is yep. really really good at that champion as well i think in general really good at a uh, champion to get all the prime and go on the, around the rift that is not one of them though that's a vagar on the r on the r3 yeah that is the wrong yordle that i was expecting <laughs> yeah. here they hovered vex for a bit but now the yordle lord is here himself shout out to all you tft fans this is a really exciting pick this does provide a lot of those Zone threat that he appreciates having on his team, where you can drop that cage, make sure that Aatrox and Ari cannot advance forward. Sometimes Wukong as well, but he's got the stealth, so it's a little hard to track down the monkey. But for Vagar, this is a really interesting pick that's going to scale up later into the game, deal a lot, a lot of damage, and provide a lot of that utility so that Dinka can deal just so much damage with the barrels later. It's, it's interesting because I think third party with the Wukong in the last game probably had a little bit more of an early game oriented approach. Um, but now with the top side of the map already locked in, so much scaling on just three, three champions alone, you may you maybe want to pick a little bit more power down on the bot side to get Lunar and just a little bit more ahead, have an avenue to play off of. But if this game does go late, third party definitely have the damage and they have the scaling. And now that we have five bans in for third party, you can really see just how devastating that bot lane matchup was. Four marksmen yeah. taken yeah, away, three and a half maybe where you want to put Senna there. This is very heavily attacking one player as third party. Maybe you're going to save their counter pick just for Lunar, just to make sure that you can do something. Lane, no, won't be the case. Setting up for a Zaya Rakan, it feels like, in Ooh. this matchup. We we mentioned this before, that it is on the new patch, and we've been looking at a few of the picks that have sort of mm -hmm. fallen off a cliff. Zaya's definitely, especially with the lethality build, not being so powerful on the durability patch anymore yeah it is interesting to see some of these old school bot laners picked up with the jinx on the other side for scoop as well um but maybe it's just comfort going into this new patch i think jinx performing a little bit better than zaya at this point in the meta um and alongside that renata to just even add more attack speed to this uh champion this big hyper carry here for jake's kittens you can see that definitely putting all of their cards into this scoop basket it will just be the recon lock in here for just as the bot lane has been completed here for third party and taking a look at this draft smacks a lot of really interesting avenues again scaling really there for third party but jake's kittens they have some too and maybe in the bottom lane, we we're seeing that these teams know something that we don't with these champions. Maybe yeah. these are still going to be powerful, but it does immediately read to me that apart from the Kog'Ma ban, uh, we're not entirely certain what this bottom lane meta is going to be. Maybe just going back to a few of these comfort picks. And for third party, now that they are on their last leg in this series, it does make a lot of sense to play a lot of comfort. That's likely why we have this Viego locked in again. The Rakan has been just signature champion from what I've seen so far. And third party just want to minimize as much of those champion intricacies as possible. Just play what they know and try to take down these titans in Jake's Kittens. And again, I have to say that with a straight face is Jake's Kids is one of the funniest names that we have newly to the space. I'm excited for them. They are in match point as they're trying to take this 2-0. The logo is literally a cat with sunglasses. Like I love it. It is one of, like, of course there's other logos. Zeus Gaming, shout out last year. Of course, Team Fish Taco will be casting a little bit later today. But man, there's just so many... <laughs> awesome logos here and and that's kind of the beauty here of amateur i mean you have a team named jake's kittens dominating everybody across the rift i've also just noticed that uh lunar he uh he's missing his 3p on his tr account yeah <laughs> he's yeah. just lunar too maybe it's a he, clone he walks alone yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't have a team he's just he's just kind of man uh, on loan or something he, he's truly the third party. He's just here. <laughs> he is a it's a third party. Oh my goodness. Wow. He's, yeah, it's Jake. lone Kids. wolf. It's 3P, and then it's Lunar. There's three. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. 
Uh, well, he's got his he's got his lane partner here with the Rakan. The lovers duo is here to yeah. try to make a statement in this matchup. You would imagine that these two champions are going to have a better time in the isolated two v two against a I guess a pair like this Renata and Jinx. However. This might be a bit of a, a table turning here as there was that ward placed very early on just to try to get that brush control very similar to what happened in game one and prisma going for that sweeper so no vision in this bottom side brush set or the side of third party it will again be scooped and prismal continue to rain havoc even against a powerful bot lane duo like the Zyrakon. I am a bit worried right now as like like we were saying the Zyrakon, they have so much all-in threat Against the double range, it's a little harder, but now this is... Oh, wow. This is they are going risky. hard in, and it might just be punished here. Scoop landing in the rockets. The ignite's oh, ticking. Man. Forced to flash away. That is not how you want to start this game for 3P. And it feels like deja vu from the last one. I think we said the exact same thing in <laughs> game one, but it is still true. Just and Lunar forced to use a couple of their defensive summoner spells. And again, in this lane that you're expecting to have some power... This is not the way to make that convincing here. Prismal and Scoop, do it again. It's so hard though, because it is Scoop and Prismal. I mean, Lunar and Jess, they had the counter pick. The, the strategy was to just, you know, try to pick something advantageous for them. I don't know if it's working out just yet. Might see something in the mid lane though. The Event Horizon Ooh. will be flashed away from Crucial Summoner off of Ryoma. Yeah, I like that a lot. And just forcing that out of Ryoma's really good early game if they can get the repeat gank down. Because if Ryoma does hit level 6, that flash not going to mean a whole lot. You do need to make another gank happen, and that's possible because of this Vagar pick. Yeah, it's so easy to just lock down Ryoma, especially now without the ultimate or the um, Spirit Rush as well. And now Jace Kidden going for another early aggressive play. Aaron is going into the enemy blue buff and potentially trying to take that off the board. It will be secured by the Jake's jungler, and that will be most likely a pretty Ooh. easy three buff for him. Not quite underneath oh. the turret. Oh, hit by the stun. This yeah. is a bit more than Ramo was expecting to take as per the is it a bait? Yumi emote. Oh, the charm! Oh, was it a bait? It was a bait all along! Message is forced to flash away. Hey, Aaron, making his presence known in mid as well. Wow, a trade of flashes now with two successful jungle ganks across both teams. And it kind of feels like messages, he could have seen this one coming, you have to feel him. Aaron was just revealed on the bottom side of the rift. Doesn't quite notice that this monkey can stealth on into yeah. the middle lane. And uh, yeah, it's, it's caught right there, no flashes for either side. However, Ryoma, once he gets level 6, like I said before, it's not going to matter that much. Max, I have a feeling that mid lane is going to be pretty much where the junglers will be for the next few minutes. I mean, just such a volatile matchup in the Ari versus Vagar, and now with both of them without Flash and pre-level 6, Aaron and Munchie should just be, you know, spending a lot of their time around them. Yeah, Munchie's gonna be kind of struggling this game, though, as they do engage onto Prismal, forces out the Flash. This is what we wanted to see from yeah. Just and Lunar from before. They had the wave push in, and Prismal did get caught out. That's a nice punish. So, yes, good, good things to see out of the side of third-party bot lane. You know, CS gap not really at the spot where it was in the last game. Still, Lunar maintaining a pretty even game state for the time being. Focus now towards the top side. Munchie still only level 3, but going to try to make a play work here on to Porsche. He doesn't have a whole lot of crowd control onto the gank flank. It's going to have to be all Munchie, but that'll be enough. Forcing the flash out of Porsche as well. Good flash force again. Munchie's done a great job of that in both of the solo lanes so far. Uh, I, I hate to keep bringing this one up there, Grapes, but you do need to repeat gank these lanes to actually yeah. make it mean a whole lot. So waiting to see that big point of impact for Munchie before he can really... None of the champions there. Well, there was a Zyrocon. <laughs> it was on the wrong team. But they were on blue team. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the preview for next game? Script leak? Game three? We, uh, Third party, big turnaround? We're taking into the alternate universe, I believe. <laughs> In the multiverse, third party select, what was it, like, <laughs> Kale, something like that? Or something. Back to the mid lane we go, Messages does have the ulti, and now Ryoma's in a lot of trouble without the flash, Cannon Barrage goes down, and that Ooh. is nearly the kill going over. Finally, just in time, Ryoma unlocks 6, and is able to dash away. That was a really good look, because Ryoma was level 5, and they set up the gank, but they just did not account for him hitting 6 on the minion wave. That's such a tragedy right there. They did everything that I hoped they would. It was just a 
just literally one second too yeah. late. Spirit Rush is there. Hey, now no ulti. You can keep going. Go right back mid. If you're if you're third party, you're right. Munchie just has to just keep, uh, you know, making plays, trying to get kills onto the board. Right now, no first blood just yet. Third party keeping this game much closer than game number one. This is this is very true, actually. It's hard to get it's hard to get more uh, of a gap <laughs> in the bottom that is true. lane than the last. It is game. close though. All things considered. Yeah, it is. It is. Another, Another flash, flash actually out of scoop as well. Munchie is just farming these flashes, lane after lane after lane. <laughs> no kills just yet, but you know, eventually things might start to come through. This is where we do see a bit of an issue with this though, because Munchie hasn't found any kills, and this, by ganking all these lanes, he is a bit behind in the gold here. You can see that Aeron is very nearly level 6, very nearly completing some big item breakpoints, already has that Sheen, which is not something that Munchie can say. Usually you do want to hit that Sheen breakpoint on your first recall as a champion that goes for something like a Divine Thunder or a Trinity Forest. Aeron has done that, Munchie has not, and this is likely why he's been able to clear a bit faster right now now a cyclone could mean that he's just able to fully comfortably set up for this drake alongside the bot lane push yeah. aaron is very very comfortably ahead in experience and gold at this point i would say despite munchie you know making plays across the map not really at enough of a spot where it's been worth it just yet gonna have to start capitalizing on some of the summoner spells being down ryomas is back up which means maybe the side lanes are the focus here they're already trying to hit level 6, and he does. Munchie has this one now, and because he ganked Porsche earlier, there is still no flash on this Aatrox. 2v1 dives are really scary with the turrets, though. Here we go. Flash in. Will it be even dive? Can Porsche even get under the tower? The answer is no. Munchie secures first blood. The ganks finally pay off. It finally happens here, Grapes. Munchie makes it work, and Porsche just barely does not find the kill on Tadinka, splitting up the damage just Ooh. a tad in the bottom lane. Trouble. Scoop. Scoop doesn't have any mana. Scoop Ooh. can't ult. Scoop can't do any damage. The Ignite's ticking. The Renato <gasps> will save oh. the life of the Jinx. Scoop survives, and Lunar goes down. And now in a 2v1, just has nowhere to go but to the death round. Scoop somehow surviving. They're going to give the kill over to Prismal, potentially, as just has nowhere to go. <laughs> Scoop has got better stuff to do right now, Graves. <laughs> Kill goes over to Prismal, solidifying their advantage in the 2v2 again. This time with the scaling lane of Renata and Jinx and that bailout. You called it Renata's ultimate. It kind of feels like it uh, should yeah. be, right? It's just the, the basic ability. That's a 2022 champion for you. Definitely feels it would be an ultimate on on a champion release in like 2013. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Either way, would. I misspoke, but either way, it is again <laughs> Scoop and Prismal getting up on top. Back to the top lane though, Munchie punishing this no flash Aatrox. He's actually so close to killing Dinka because he walked into that third uh the third Darken Blade, but didn't quite acknowledge that one. And yeah, let's let's see the stun again. Really nicely placed by Prismal and just walking forward. Let's get nice hit flash. by it. I like the flash from Lunar, as you're saying, just to get all the feather damage down, but that's, that's bailout for you. Uh, Can't quite so kill sad. Scoop, you gotta do it twice. Man, I mean, I was so hopeful. I thought it was really there. Maybe maybe the game three will, will come. Maybe Dust and Lunar are gonna be the ones to turn things around for third party. The gold again all belongs to Scoop at this point. The only one even close is Dinka, and he was is the one, you know, farming with that gold pass as well. Yeah, total shocker, right? That Scoop is at the top of the gold leaderboard. Could never now. have expected. <laughs> <laughs> and Dinka only keeping up because of the gangplank passive alongside that gank from before, as he's now forced to flash. Porsche just has so much damage. You do not want to get dragged on back into the clutches of the Darkened Blade. Aatrox just randomly will, will one-shot you. Like, yep, despite yeah. how behind you are in CS or anything, you have the Iron Spike whip, you have the ulti, that's enough. You can, can get burst down pretty instantaneously. Uh, bot lane, though, just pops the ulti, but the Q from Prisma will send him right away, shoo the bird back to its nest with Munchie and Messages. Spending a little bit of time towards this bot side, it will allow for Ryoma to get the push in it. You can see now a bit of why Prisma wanted to pick Renata Glass in this matchup. Another stun connects. Oh, just oh they're looking doesn't. to engage. Here comes the Berserk landing on to three, oh. and there goes the burst, just gets deleted. And now Aaron in the backside as well, going for the Cyclone. Scoop has been left untouched, and he will finish off the kill onto Lunar as well. Munchie barely is unable to finish off anybody as Prismal stopwatches just in time, and all of a sudden smashes 5-1 in favor of Jace. 
Season 12 champion strikes again! Everybody on third party is attacking each other thanks to the Renata ultimate. And now it's the turret dropping again. Jake's the real kittens third party. giving all of the gold to their AD carry. And this game is just so, so difficult for third party again all of a sudden. We got so close. We Third party have played the early game really well. Just scooped and Prismal are playing, playing it better right now. Look at all this damage that Diego and Rakan deal to each other. And we have a we have a lover's quarrel there too. <laughs> Lunar getting all the feathers down onto his beloved. Oh, it's a disaster. I wonder if there's like a voice line for that. Hey! <laughs> Babe, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. We're uh <laughs> You, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to cut the joke off there. I think. Uh, yeah, I, I. It could have gone more. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> Avril can, can chime in a little bit. You know, oh desk, no! But. Oh, you know, maybe maybe it fits her brand a bit better. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to get too too far into that one though. Anyway, love you, Avril. Uh, Jake's kittens. They they've got a lot of this damage. Uh, on to scooped again, but uh, Prismal. Oh. Caught out. Where's the flash? Oh, here comes another one. Just trying to lock down the Renata. We'll pick up the kill. Now, can Aaron get anything in the 2v1? Landing the charm in. Messages still alive and still untouched for now. Here comes the dash forward. Aaron is into the cage, but so is Messages. And that is the Vagar going down. And the turn from Jake's Kittens is just so good. It is all too clean. A double kill onto the Wukong, and Justin and Lunar have to run for the hills. Oh, and it is Prismal getting caught out. Like we were, like we were seeing, might end up happening, but Jake's kittens are able to turn this one around again. Scooped getting excited in these skirmishes, and Aaron is the one who has most of the kills on this team. He has a gigantic lead in that jungle from before because Munchie was really focused on going for all of these ganks, and now we're seeing what this Titan in the jungle can really do on this patch and before as well, with the terrain scaling on the decoy and all of the damage from the Divine Sunderer. Aaron he might be the main character this time. Yeah, it was scooped in the last game, maybe Aaron this time, and crucially enough, Smack, it's neither of the experienced players again. It is the young guys, for Jake's Kittens, continuing to step up, and Prismal might be in trouble again, stuck under the event horizon. Really, really nice, oh. fairly fancy footing, getting him away from that cage, and Renata Ult will do enough to get the rest of third party out of the fight. Or a thousand gold lead here for Jake's Kittens, and they're looking to add even more. It is showing us, though, that this Vagar pick is kind of working out. They're not able to get any of these kills, per se, but Messages is causing Jake's Kittens to be on the back foot in some of these skirmishes. The Vagar cage is really strong at doing that, so Jake's Kittens really do need to be careful of this and actually play with more reservation in the future. Otherwise, they will be caught out and give third party some more leeway in this game. And that's the thing, Max. The, the scaling for third party still exists, especially towards the top side, right? Dinka having a significant lead. We see messages almost being able to finish off some of these solo kills, just continuing to stack up more and more AP. And of course, Munchie on the Viego as well. And even though, you know, Lunar on the Zaya might not be the strongest late game champion, if Jake's Kittens, you know, don't end this game pretty quickly, the scaling can start to pack a punch if third party are able to keep the gold at around this stage. That's actually true, yeah. This is the, the game playing pick that we expected Porsche to be piloting in this game. They didn't go for that first pick as third party did set up that trade in the draft Wukong for Gangplank. They took the handshake and uh, actually hold on, speaking of handshakes, Prismal yeah, messages be able to land one. Out here. a bit of trouble. Here comes the drag back. Nearly able to take down Scoop, but there's the heal to keep him at about half HP. It is Aaron again with kill number five. The joke there is that Renata's Q is called handshake. I just uh, wanted to spell that one out for you. <laughs> Please laugh. The abilities, the, the new abilities, just, <laughs> they, they, they still kind of push, uh, confuse me here and there. So, <laughs> but forgive me if I don't get all of the puns that you're kind of throwing out. Porsche in trouble, nearly taken down just, but Munchie will be able to finish the job off the dive. It was a really good flash there from Porsche, dodging all of Just's crowd control. It's just a little too much damage there in the 3v1. Speaking oh, of 3v1 no. under turrets, yeah. Lunar? Prismal oh, is literally everywhere under turret. Doesn't matter. Gonna try to take down Lunar here. Ultimate just goes wide. I will survive for now with the mid lane tower. Not so lucky. Oh, and the minion actually saves Lunar there from the charm too. Turret dead, and Vagar Cage just can't quite catch anybody out because of the movement there from Aaron. 
I, I'm, I'm telling you, th there's gonna be one of these times where messages find somebody and it actually turns the tides. I'm predicting this. I, I can see into the future right now. Third party are, are gonna be able to find something. I, I hope so. I mean, it's Vagar. If you can't one-shot somebody like Scoop or Ryoma off of uh, a cage at, at this point in the game, things are a bit worrisome. Not yet at that Everfrost just yet, but messages continuing to scale. Staying, you know, in a, at a decent spot right now, but haven't gotten to that late game spot just yet. Some scaling here on on both teams. After we did see the scoop to went for the the jinx, that is going to be a scary pick throughout the yeah. rest of this game here for third party. And well, messages. He's right. trying to catch people out, and uh, instead he, down. he's he's catching this one out for himself again. Does land the stun on Ryoma? Can the trade come through? Probably not. There comes another charm, and Ryoma will pick up the kill. The alcove was not his friend, Grapes, at this time. Right. Unfortunate there for messages. You know, the, again, he, he's just getting bullied at this point. Yeah. There's no turret for him to, to farm. hide underneath. He's just trying to farm. He's trying to scale up on Vagar, and Jake's kittens are just really not allowing this to happen whatsoever. I, you know, at this time, Grapes, I want to ask... Yeah. Who do you think is the best kitten for Jake? For, for Jake? Well, Jake is Prismal, right? Jake is Prismal, yeah. So so in most situations, Prismal being the support, Jake is the king. Is that, is that what we're going with here? I would I would sometimes call myself a kitten, yes. Yeah, so the support, being the kitten for their other team, you know, just kind of runs around, does not as much damage, you know, but is it, still a very crucial part of the team. I think Prismal, I th I, my, vote, my vote's on Prismal, as in the mid lane. He is a little bit more here, here comes the flank, Prismal gonna get taken down, that revive does not enough here, and Aaron will have to just dash away, one quick kill on the side of third party. He needs some more kittens right now to actually support him, because he yeah. is the one who's getting <laughs> caught out once more on Jake's kitten's side. Meanwhile, they're taking a trade up in the top side, it is Ryoma who takes away that turret. Ooh, now TP. Jake's kittens find themselves in... A bit of a 3v4 until the Ari Teleport comes in. This sole point here for Jakes if they're able to pick it up. But Porsche gets taken down instantly. Aeron coming through with the Cyclone and doing a whole lot of damage. Lunar goes down as the Wukong is now dominating. And it's a double kill. It's a triple kill for the Wu. Can it be more? Ryoma's joining the fight as well. Ooh. The dash forward is nearly there. Munchie has to run away. He's going to try to land a stun onto Ryoma, but it's not enough just yet. Aeron in a whole lot of a good spot. An unofficial Quadra. Can it be the unofficial Penta? Dinka says no, but it's 4 for 0. Four kills for the side of Jake's Kittens. I told you he was going to be the main character in this one, Grapes. Aaron is 9-0 on the Wukong. First picking this champion, giving all of the time for third party to try their best to provide a strategy to beat this. But they just came up short. Aaron is completely taking over this game. Again, in the face of all of these veterans, he's helping out his team. And he is the benefactor of all of these plays. Three drinks in a row and he is the guy who's taking us to a 2-0. Smax, before the fight, before Aaron pressed the R button on the Wukong, it was a 3v5. Two members for Jake's already went down. Prismal was dead. Porsche also basically taken down before Aaron was able to do anything. He just turns the fight all by himself. You know, Scoop mm -hmm. did a little bit, Ryoma did a little bit, but you know, if we're really thinking about it, it was Aaron being the big carry amongst so many veterans on this team. It's so incredible, too, because this guy, this is his first competitive split ever. He's 16 years old. He's coming directly from uh, from solo queue. He hasn't played Champions Queue or anything. Like, this is yeah. the first that we're ever seeing of Aeron in competitive, and he is with Ryoma, who some would say is the best mid laner <laughs> that was playing in Academy in the last split. I am one of those some, by the way. Ryoma yeah. was so good, placing third overall on Golden Guardians Academy. It takes a lot to come into a game and be the jungler for him and like sometimes outshine him in these games and it feels like he's doing that right now. And being on a team with so many skilled players, I mean, Aaron must have really impressed a lot of people and we're seeing why he has been yeah. so impressive for Jake's Kittens, you know? Being amongst Ryoma, Scoop, Prismal, even Porsche, who's a very highly regarded top laner in the collegiate space. Such a newcomer doing all this work. We're going to see oh, a little man. bit more of it here. Scoop! We'll finish off the kill with a rocket all the way from downtown. And now Aaron's looking for more knockup landing in onto just just for now. Munchie gonna try to get in onto the team, do something about it. 
the Berserk lands, but not doing a whole lot of damage. And Hibbert in the bot lane falls. Five strong here for Jake's Cadence. Ultimate forced out of Lunar, and not enough damages here from the Zaya just yet. They are just going straight into the base of third party and aren't getting punished a single bit. Ultimate from Messages does nothing to the likes of Aaron. Munchie finally gets a kill onto Scoop, but now the rest of the numbers advantage still remains on the Jake side. Justin Munchie are on the wrong side of the map, and they don't have a whole lot of health to work with. Messages has to do all this to get them away, and they just barely will be able to. They just lost all of their bottom lane, including the Nexus turret at 21 minutes, and they've got scooped dead to show for it. That's just about it, Grapes. This game is all but over. Third party is not able to do a whole lot in this position. They are, they're three drakes down as well. There's no soul point in sight for them. They've got some scaling, yes, but it's going to take just so, so much to overcome this, and it would require Jake's Kittens making a lot of uncharacteristic plays, which they have not done. They've had this game yeah. unlocked this entire time. It's been so impressive. This whole series, very few mistakes being made by Jake's Kittens. The only ones you can really point out are when Prismal gets caught trying to ward, which, again, is just what every support you know tends to do. So I, I, it's very hard to see a possibility where third party are able to turn this game back around just because of how great Jake's Kittens have played throughout both the Open Qualifier and here in the group stage. I'm thinking that Jake's Kittens are earning their second seed right now here. Yeah. Grapes, this is very impressive stuff from them. We had some question marks going in. Would would their new players be able to keep up with these veterans? Would Ryoma just run over everybody? The answer to those questions, the first one is definitely Yes, yeah, second one, maybe not so, because Ryoma hasn't actually needed to the, so far. It's been scooped, it's been Aeron, it's been Prismal role swapping as well, who have been the big standout members. And, you know, that's not to say that Ryoma has been playing yeah, poorly. No, he's exactly. been putting in his work every single game so far, but he's been playing the supportive style, and it's working. Doesn't need to do anything when you have the rookies doing so much damage. And now, might get punished here for third party. This is the trade that they potentially need. But look at Aaron. He's onto the back line. The Berserk is huge. And Jake's Kittens are just running the floor with third party. Two go instantly down. Nobody on Jake's Kittens falls. And Baron's on the table. Mid lane's available for the taking as well. Okay. Lot for Jake's to do. Ryoma is forced off the stopwatch. Going to get knocked up as well. But it is still in the numbers advantage in favor of Jake's. Porsche forcing the flash out of messages. Health bar's low on the third party side. Jake's also in a pretty low state. Looks like they're not going to go for the Baron just yet. Instead, trying to go for the resets after getting a couple of kills. Taking these kills is really solid as Dinka may have gone too far. All of the oh, team is yeah. still here, Grapes! Here comes Porsche, the dash forward, knockup from Just, landing in only onto oh. one. And Porsche will flash forward, landing two knockups in. But he oh. will get taken down by messages. That's the one shot that we were looking for. Third party, get one back. I said it was going to come eventually. Messages would catch somebody out. I was getting a little worried that it wouldn't happen and I'd look <laughs> a fool. But it's okay, Messages. He got at least one. Maybe this is the beginning of more? I would be surprised if that was the case. As Ryoma, he may be uh, hunting himself. Canceling the reset Ooh. here for Messages. And he's getting very, very low. Nearly taken down by the likes of Ryoma. Dinka trying to do some damage to the barrels, but he's going to get stunned right up with the charm. Aaron coming in with a cyclone as well, and that is just too much damage on the side of Jake's Kittens. Munchie is still barely alive, and they finally get a couple of kills back over a double in onto messages, but Scooped was not even in the fight to begin with, and now the fight all belongs to him. He picks up a kill onto just three dead on the side of third party as they have their base being broken as well. <laughs> that Nexus turret almost died, Graves. Like, yeah, third party got those shutdowns, but they are just losing their base. And now here comes the prize of the Infernal Soul, thanks to Aaron's jungle capabilities from before. Scooped picks that one up for his team. There's just so much damage now that third party has to deal with. There already was, but now it's just even more. I mean, look at the items right now. Four Jake Kitten. Three on Scoop, three on Ryoma, three on Aaron. Now look at the other side. Two items across the board for everybody, except for Lunar, who only has one. So right now, oh. it seems really, really hard for third party to do anything. Very, very slight glimpses of potential here, but it was just not enough. A few of these catches. Uh, but as you said, it's just not enough. And because of all of the minions in the base, this is just not going to be worth it. Is Okay, wait. Prismal? Getting caught out warding? No, no, no. no. It's a all right, he's thing. safe this time. Right. He learned. <laughs> 
Maybe graduating a little bit here, but now Ryoma forces Spirit Rush away. Lunar raining in some damage with the Feathers as well. Berserk landing in only onto one, just not doing a whole lot of damage on the Rakan auto attacks. But you see the gold on your screen right now. 9,000 in favor of Jake just moments ago. At about seven and a half right now, still in a good spot. Now just looking to try and go for the engage. Stun will land. Prismal Ooh. does go down. Dinka will get dragged in by the chains, but Ryoma is so low. Forced to pop the stopwatch, and the drag back might secure the kill. A double kill into the hands of Lunar, oh. but Aaron is still alive. Aaron still has a Cyclone, and Aaron is popping the stopwatch as well. Another kill going in onto Dinka. The stun lands. Messages Ooh. to try to turn the fight around. Finally, shutdown goes in onto Aaron. Scoop trying to fight this out. 1v4 on the Jinx, but he gets stunned up. Messages nearly able to take down the AD carry as well, but third party win the fight despite the soul. Now hold on just one moment, Grapes. Did I just see what I think I saw? I third think party winning a team fight <laughs> Four for one, and they're moving to the Baron, all because they were able to catch out the support, they were able to catch out Ryoma and Forrest just one by one, finding these members. The Baron, Even their inhibitors respond. This is going to be a Baron. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Oh. He's dead. He's dead to death's dance. Oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's a small sacrifice. Get the Baron for third party. I don't know how much they can I've do never, off of it in general, but yeah. It, it, I don't think I've ever seen someone <laughs> die to Baron after Baron died. That's a, yeah. that's a new thing for me. Big shout out to Just and um, Messages, by the way, here on this fight. They find the picks, yeah. and, and that's basically the only way that third party can get away with the win. Look at this final Vagar cage, too. It actually stuns both of these members at the same time. That's crazy to me. And he's able to oh. keep all this zone threat for his team. Really close to killing Scoop, too. I think Scoop was trying to flash forward onto Lunar, but he, actually, he accidentally made it over the wall and hit the Raptors instead. Could have been could have been disastrous for third party, but Scoop just barely misclicked. Yeah, we we're we we're one like si sort of misclick away from Scoop having that highlight performance on the first series of the split. Uh, going to the one before definitely was possible. Not there just yet though. And take a look at the gold. We're bouncing right back. Only about four thousand in Jake's kitten's favor. Talked about the scaling smacks. It might start to come online. Ten stacks on the dark seal for messages. He's got a death cap, he's got an anathemas, he's getting there, Grapes. This is going to be a pretty threatening Vagar. All of a sudden, the Jake's Kittens do need to deal with. They were so close to fully ending the game at 21 minutes. And here we are, eight minutes later, and they haven't done it. They haven't been able to secure all the Barons. They have the, the Infernal Soul, but now Elder's ticking down, and that could be a win condition for third party. And they're losing team fights that they were winning before. Scary stuff all of a sudden. I think for, you still have to find picks if you are third party. You have to find mm -hmm. the catch outs under Prismal like you have throughout some of these winning fights. Vagar Cage, the Rakan engages, do a whole lot in terms of helping that out. It can still have a very powerful 5v5 with this Cyclone for Aaron. Scoop now at four completed items as well. This, you have this Elder Dragon spawning in a minute 45 smacks. This is where <clears throat> the tables might start to turn again. Yeah, really notable here for Scoop. He does not have Guardian Angel. He does not have Stopwatch. He does not have Cleanse. There's no way for him to escape a Vagar Cage other than fighting through it. So that could be a huge win condition as he doesn't even have Flash. Yeah. The Flash will not be up during the Elder Dragon. So messages, all you have to do is get Jake uh, <laughs> Prismal. Get, get uh, <laughs> uh, Jake and Scooped caught in the, uh, in the cage and they're just dead. There's no way for them to leave. It's so scary. We're on a nice edge right now. I was not expecting this um, maybe even 10 minutes ago. Uh, maybe not even at the start of this series, but third party. Proving that, you know, despite the lower seating, despite not playing the strongest of opponents in the open qualifier, they're here to compete with the top of the top. Mm -hmm. This is really, really impressive right now. This is one of the big things the third parties when wanting to show that they can do in this split because they did play in the last split. They didn't quite make it into that first qualifier. They just barely skirted in in the last one and it wasn't enough to give them that playoffs berth for proving grounds. You need to be top 
10 for Amateur to make it. They weren't quite there. But look at Messages. Oh, Ryoma already forced the stopwatch out, but here comes the Cyclone coming out from Aaron. Oh, messages no. is taken down. Messages is dead. And that just might be the end of the coffin here for a third party. Can the turnaround come through? It might just be able to. Lunar locked up. He gets the double. He's trying to take down Porsche as well. Munchie on the back line. Scoop falls. There's the kill going in onto Dinka. And this is third party turning the game back around. A triple kill onto Lunar and only Prismal survives. They're still managing to do it, even though Messages is the one that gets picked off. They don't need the Vagar to continue moving forward. Lunar and Just, the Zaya and Rakan are dealing all the damage, and the Gangplank is scaling Graves. Yeah, the Elder Dragon is alive, and it's only Prismal to take down. This is going to be so free for them. No hostile takeover here on to Prismal. Oh, they so, even see him. No chance for the ulti to potentially... You know, flip a fight right on top of its head. DP is available onto Porsche and Ryoma. We are getting close to their respawns here. Elder Dragon at about 5,000 HP. I have to be careful though. Prismal might look for some sort of engage. Not going to be able to do so. That's the Elder for third party. That is the gold lead in favor of third party as well. <laughs> No way this actually just happened. This message is... <laughs> I thought this was over. I thought this yeah. was going to be the game for Jake's kids as they picked off messages. We have to see what happened after this because everybody was full force forward just with the flank of Rakan flashing over that wall, charming everybody up and delaying the spikes from Scoop and Prismal who thought they were safe and then they were entirely wrong, forced to kite away on the other side of the wall from their front line, not able to take advantage of all of the crowd control from the Wukong, and it is just just on the Rakan who's able to make that work. It's been really impressive to see the see just perform here with some of these engages that um, him and the rest of third party has had. As you know, Elder Dragon, not much competition for the likes of third party. And hey, maybe Jake's Kitten is not much for the competition of third party. They're up 1,000 gold. We were talking about how it seemed like an insurmountable deficit all the way back down and into third party's favor. I believe there is about a minute left on that Elder Dragon. Maybe maybe a bit more. Uh, you know, I'm not going to try to do math on the stream right now. <laughs> That's the number Even one rule. In the final hour here for third party and Jake's Kittens, third party, they still need to win this game and the next one to try to end this series. But look in the base. Porsche is there. They're not wow. recalling. They're oh, not teleporting well. to stop him. Aaron is here too. They could try no to teleport on third party. They They're going to have to try to burst down this Baron as fast as possible. It's at 5,000. Rocket will not secure the deal. They'll have the accelerated recalls. But <gasps> into the base, Jake's Kittens. No way. Goes. Here comes the Nexus Tower. There's it's a teleport. Down. Here comes the backs. But is it in time? Porsche and Aaron trying to save the game. They don't will they get be able it. to turn it back around? The burns are coming in. Porsche will get executed. A double kill on the Lunar. Third party hold the line for now. Oh my god. Jake's Kittens with the most bold play imaginable. Try to end the game through inhibitor, Nexus turret, and the, the Baron back. recalls. And they just can't do it. Now the Una reverse card is here. Third party. <laughs> they have the Baron. They have the Elder Dragon. And they already killed Porsche and Aeron. They might be able to use this timer to end the game right now. No front line on the side of Jake's, but the damage is all there. Ryoma, Scoop, Prismo, all alive. Will they be able to do it? Here they go, under the inhibitor tower. Third party just have Lunar and Munchie basically doing the damage here. They have Dinka oh. back to defend the base, and because of that, they are too scared to go for the 3v3 and will back away. They're not trying to engage. Their Elder Dragon did expire. My math was right. And third party make the correct call of backing away. Very risky for them to continue without the Elder Dragon buff. We get to watch this so crazy replay oh. one more time. It is Messages who gets caught. We're seeing the other side of the replay. And even though he is able to get two cages off in this one, funny enough, it's oh, just not quite enough damage, even with the Elder onto Scooped and Jake's Kittens. They, they oh. give over their prized... Mizoriyama! Inka has Ooh. to use the orange to get away. Rocket won't connect. Baron buff still in the hands of third party, so they have the better minions at this point in time. They'll have the pushing power, but Jake's Kittens still in the driver's seat right now, despite being down in gold. Looks like third party is just a little bit worried to continue to push forward. 
We're about two minutes away from a second Elder Dragon in this game, and I'm starting to believe that the teams might need it to actually close this one out. Jake's Kittens, they're keeping competitive around the rift. They did all the dirty work earlier of clearing out the bottom lane, and now it's just a naked nexus. They need to actually get into the base to do it, and that forces third party to never commit all of their members to out side of this they need to keep somebody there to clear out the minions in the bottom lane and make sure there are no sneaky wards and teleports arriving to just end the game that they've fought so hard to keep competitive that, that's why um taking that inhibitor down to the bottom lane by porch by aaron was so crucial you always have the threat of the back door teleports up for both soul laners of jake's kitten it's just so scary even though third party have the advantage one little mistake in the game and the series are both over Oh, it's true for both teams though at this point just one team fight away from both teams ending this game jake's kittens would solidify a 2-0 and third party would make it a three game series no matter what this result is going to be it's sure to be an entertaining explosion of a final here oh my word and this is only the first <laughs> this is the first series the first first series of the split mind you <laughs> It's the, it's the underdogs, the 15th seed out of 16 teams, oh, almost in position to send the two seed to a game three and off of some explosive team fighting, all things considered. <laughs> Third party, they keep their gold lead right now. They keep the, the tides in their favor in that regard, and they do have this five item gangplank full crit here with the Trinity Force. If you get hit, by a parlayed barrel, you will die if you're a scoop or prismal. <laughs> there's, there's no if, ands, or buts. You're just dead at this point. So third party, they have that for themselves. If they can get in, they can get the zone threat here for messages and Dinka. They might be able to find a way into this Elder Dragon yeah. before it spawns. Wave's still pushed in though. Jake's kittens are in the position around the pit. They're the better spot right now. Dinka trying to clear out this super minion wave. Ryoma is in the wings. Can he get the engage everyone as well dinka might get punished for this here comes the cycle and the oranges don't save oh. you very much from that big shutdown on the gank like before the fight even begins and the berserk lands in onto two there's just forced the dash away aaron really really low on the backside and munchie goes down as well lunar trying to do something trying to save the game trying to save the series for third party but it oh. might not be enough there's the shutdown though big ultimate coming out from messages keeping third party alive and the ga from lunar will save the game for 3p it was a really close skirmish there, but importantly, Munchie is dead, Aaron is not. There's a smite mismatch alongside a numbers advantage oh, for man. Jake's Kittens. They've lost There's their ball. big damage dealer, and now Going Justice straight forward. out. He flashes in for the slow. He's going to lock down Ooh. Messages. Messages goes down. Ryoma picks up the kill, and now Just has to run away. It is just the That's bot lane it. for third party alive. Can they save it? That's gotta be the game right now, Graves. Dinka's up in 10 seconds, but it's one inhibitor and one Nexus left for Jake's Kittens as they're going for the 2 0. Porsche is flashing go. in. Can Lunar save the game? Prismo has the, t t t the revive on himself. It's not gonna matter. It was just too much pressure for Jake's Kittens going 2 0 for third party. Oh, very nearly a four minute game as third party. They do all they can to claw their way back in with all the scaling, all the zone threat and all the picks. But it just quite isn't enough in the end. Dinka gets caught out right when his team needed him most. He vanished and so <laughs> did this series. Man, I was so ready to call a game three for that series as well. What a storyline it would have been. It was so close that we were talking about it. You know, they, the first three picks in the draft for third party, scaling, 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 Gangplank, Viego, and the Vagar. They nearly got to that point. But Jake's Kittens, it was just one simple punish. Ryoma and Aaron joining forces, the young and the old, take the crucial pick and to take the series win. I absolutely love that game. I'm sure the third party are are feeling a little, little gloomy after that one. They were really close. But I think them being close and being competitive in that series is a really good sign for the rest of this split. If they are shooting for a top 10 spot in amateur, if they are shooting for their first venture into proving grounds, that is a good way to start off the split. Even if it is a 0-2, I think they can be a bit proud of that one and you know, feel good moving forward into their games next week. Yeah, and let's not forget that, you know, third party, they played against 
one of the best teams in this tournament and potentially one yeah. of the best players in this tournament as well in Ryoma. If they can put up that much of a fight against such a top team, you know, they, they're not out of this tournament just yet. They have to play the loser of Team Fish Taco versus AoE Ginger Turmeric after this. They're in a pretty good spot, I think. You know, we haven't seen the next game, but they, they definitely look like, you know, they are making sure that this is not just like a three-team group. We could have some even more competitive games later, though, Graves. I don't know. We, we got some really good teams here for the second series. And uh, I'm hearing before we get to that, we have a little bit of an interview. Yes, yeah, so we, we have to break down some of the action here. We're going to take a quick break, but then right when we get back, Hawk and the rest of the desk are going to break down what happened as well as talk to one of the winners of Jake's video. And welcome back, everybody, to the Academy stream. I am joined here by Aaron after that incredible 2-0 win over third party. Aaron, just to start it off, how are you feeling after that big win? Um, I wouldn't call it a big win. Uh, it's just a win. Uh, it was kind of... I wouldn't say expected, but uh, I feel obviously I feel really good, but it's not the end of the road. You know, this isn't where we want to end our season. So, yeah, job's not finished. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's a, an amazing mindset. I feel like right off the bat, always looking forward, you know, it's just a win. And, and that is that's really cool, honestly. And so, I mean, just, you know, a little bit about about you you know you're one of the youngest players that we have here in this tournament and you're playing for such an incredibly prolific roster in jake's kittens what does it mean to you to come into a roster that has so many experienced players and get to play uh, at, at the top level of amateur league of legends i mean it feels great to play with these players you know porsche ryoma scooped Prismal, like they really act as mentors for me so i really it's it's really good i wouldn't change anything about this team that's awesome. Is, is there one in particular that like you've gotten really, you know, is, is like particularly a mentor or in any way, or is it all of them um, together? Like a big, big co-brother thing. <laughs> kind of both, but I appreciate uh, Prismal especially for, you know, jungle support has to be in synergy and I really appreciate mm -hmm. him reaching out to me, you know, outside of the game, inside of the game. I just love communicating with him. I was, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I, he, he is Jake, I do believe, for the Jake's yes, team. So yes. I feel like it makes sense that he is a leader on the team. But, um, you know, you mentioned uh, that, you know, jungle and support have to be in synergy. I feel like we really saw that on display in the series. In particular, you were going bot uh, coupled with Ryoma a lot in the early game both times. Was this sort of something that you guys had pre-prepared wanting to play against third party or did you guys come up, kind of come up with this early game plan on the fly? I mean, when we were drafting that comp, we had an idea of playing bot side. So mm -hmm. it was somewhat, somewhat planned, but it was also on the fly. Like, oh, hey, I can crash the mid wave. We can look bot. And yeah, it was just that. Very cool. Very cool. And, you know, um, of course, this team, th this Jake's Kittens roster, you guys now have picked up your first win, as you mentioned. It's just a win. It's the first win of group stage, but there's many more left to be had. And you guys will, of course, be playing the winner of AoE Ginger Turmeric up against Team Fish Taco, which we're about to see in a few minutes on the stream. Uh, how are you feeling uh, about playing against those teams? You know, who, who are you looking forward to playing? Any, any sort of rivalry, banter? I don't know. I mean, I honestly haven't looked at the other rosters that much. Um, mm -hmm. so the, both teams are indifferent to me. It's just the team. Fair enough. Yeah. Just, just play in your game regardless of, uh, regardless, you know, name plates off that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. More than fair. And the last question I just have for you is in that game too. I mean, that Wukong, I feel like most people would agree that champion pretty good right now. Yeah. You were, you were literally Thanos. I mean, what, what was that like? Just playing spin to win, getting in the middle of the team fights and doing so much work. I mean, I definitely could have played better. There were some f fights that I misplayed, but mm -hmm. the champ is really strong. I like it. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Aaron, for joining mm -hmm. me on this interview. Congratulations again on this win. We're looking very much forward to seeing you guys play next week in the winner of AoE Danger Turmeric up against Team Fish Taco. But I wish you the best, and thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, and we will be transitioning back over to the analyst desk i am of course joined once again by rude dude and avril to break down this amazing series y'all what what just straight up how how are we feeling about how that went you know uh, i think avril you can do this that's all you no that i was gonna say that was a banger that was such a banger 
There's no other way of putting it. Uh, I, I think that that's like that's enough on its own. Uh, we said that coming in, it'd be a close series. I think that despite the fact that myself and yourself, Hulk, both casted and predicted rather two O's, I think we could have asked for a better 2-0 to, to showcase both of the teams. Yeah, I mean, I do think it is fair to say game one was pretty one-sided, but that game that we just saw, that game number two, third party looked like they might have won that game. They brought the gold graph, I think, from 10,000 behind all the way back to even. That was absolutely insane. But I think... You know, to get to that 10,000 gold lead that Jake's Kittens had, it did come down to a huge 3v3 play on the bottom side of the map. And Avril, do you want to break this one down? Yeah, once the replay shows up, um, this this is a, the fight that really blew the game up uh, for Jake's Kittens. Uh, the game looked pretty even, and it was actually looking pretty good for 3p until this fight. So, mm -hmm. can't wait to get into it. There's a little right. bit of a context to it as well. I don't know if we get it at the start, but there's a... This is the Renata Q, I think, mm -hmm. right? That we were like, oh. Yeah, oh, yeah right, let's yeah. see. Here we go, here yeah. we go. Let's see. We're going to see the Q, I think. No, okay, this was after it all. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it was, it was a, there was a play before this that the Rakan blew his ult for nothing because Prisma got a really smurf Q, but... Yeah, this play was really easy because they still decided, 3P still decided to go for this play after it, they should have just let it fizzle out because the initial engage was already stopped by a really good Renata Q. Yeah. yeah, and you mentioned as well about those timings going for the gank. They were looking for things mm -hmm. that slightly missed or the, the wrong windows. They went for a play when the wave wasn't fully crashed. They were really overforcing for it and a really good capitalization by Jake's Kittens to say, hey, they've not got this big cooldown and they're still reaching for a fight let's collapse let's capitalize and let's start to generate this massive lead and it looked like in that moment that the game was going to go the way that game one had just gone how we had just seen it where jake's kittens they get bot tower they snowball scooped and then they roam top they get top tower and then the game kind of just ends but that wasn't quite the story that we had in this game and in fact third party they ended up fighting back extremely well as we can see from this team fight in towards the mid game i think around 24 25 minutes or so rude dude what what sort of happened here okay uh this was really just everybody trying to get on top of one another and then all of a sudden with no renata ulti it's that same type of thing that we talked about before where you've missed one cooldown, now let's go again. Just here has a nice little engage onto one target. The flame chompers are huge. Oh, not flame chompers. Are, yeah, yeah. They're, they're just there to do what's necessary. But it's the back half of this fight that honestly is so big for 3P because you're looking at this, you're scooped. Your lips are like, oh my word, I'm about to get a quadra. I'm about to get a penta. First pre event horizon, zones scooped off. Second event horizon, stuns both players. Viego gets a reset here. Look at the reset. Immunes. Oh. On the auto. Immunes huh. the auto attack. Scoops can't reset. He flashes over the wall to try and find somebody. Doesn't quite get it. It is a game of microseconds. Literally, there was nothing that could have been closer about that. So many mechanics going into that fight. And that just... It, I, I demanded that replay to be shown because of all of those intricacies on the fight itself and all of these little interactions that caused it not to just be scooped going off and getting all four. Yeah, that re I didn't actually see that rocket fizzle mid-air in the reset. I mean, that is so touch and go. That's Viego mm -hmm. Gaming right there, Munchie, able to make it happen. But sadly for third party, it wasn't enough, and Jake's Kittens managed to come back. So sort of what ended up going wrong in the late game that allowed Jake's Kittens to take that final team fight, Avril? Oh, um, well, on this, on this specific play, uh, Dinka just got caught. There really wasn't really much to it. After this, um, somehow they, 3P got out. Uh, I think three of their members got out besides Munchie, and mm. they got this huge play. You guys need to see this. Lunar, Lunar actually has a Lunar and Messengers have a really huge play on Scooped. The flat, these double flashes, but yeah, they look for that route right, and then just event or primordial burst. At a certain point, you do experience ADC. But it's, it's not quite enough. Double TPs are able to get used by Jake's Kittens. They get Porsche and Roma back in on full HP. And I think this is 3P. Just at these late game stages, it's so difficult to 
have her head screwed on straight and there were just a couple of missteps, right? Dinka getting caught out and the overstay by 3P here. Once they've lost two, they lost their jungler as well. Yeah. They don't really have any business sticking around there trying yeah. to contest a dragon. They just need to go back, lick their wounds and try and set up for something different. Instead, they give Jake's kittens a fight. They allow them to find an engage. And again, kudos to Prismal for finding it because it's flash slow into handshake and pulling back to get the initial pick that starts off the actual ending of the game. But again, just slightly overreaching by 3P, but they had an absolutely amazing mid game to try and claw their way back. Exactly. There is no there is no elder play after the few members have died. And they may as well could have won if they didn't get caught on that play. Yeah, I, I feel like that is the knife's edge that you sort of stand on when you're trying to come back into a game. I mean, Smack said it on broadcast. Jake's Kittens almost ended the game at 21 minutes. And then it ended up being a 40-minute banger, right? And so that sort of, like, razor edge is like, yeah, you're winning fights. But if you lose just one, make just one mistake it really can turn the game on its head. But speaking of the 40 minute banger, if we can bring up our updated bingo card real quick, see how we were we were doing on everything maybe uh, real quick. If we have that one, we can- I think we had five. We definitely yeah, we had have five, five checks off. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. Yeah. Huge. Let's go. Yeah. Some of them we can't get. Uh, we cannot get, uh, unfortunately, we have not gotten game three yet. Third party taking game, not gonna happen. Messages, getting a solo kill, not gonna happen. Um, but we did get a few, you know, the one kill per minute game in game one. We had the 40 minute banger close enough, uh, not crossed out here, but it will be 40 minute banger, you know, uh, lots of, lots of fun stuff happening okay, here, we have but to think strategically, oh, never mind. We, we have to think strategically. You want to get those lines down the middle. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, well, absolutely. Either way, we are going to go to a quick break between our series. Thank you all so much for watching this first one. But remember, we have AoE Ginger Turmeric and Team Fish Taco up next. So don't go anywhere and make sure to tune in and for Avril before we sign off. Any last thoughts from your time on the desk? Thank you so much for having me. I am really happy that I get to do this instead of just doing nothing. So I'm not playing this split, but I really, I really appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, of course. Your absolute pleasure to have. Thank you so much again. We'll be back in just about 10 to 20 minutes. Don't go anywhere.